Hi there and a very warm welcome indeed. My name is Richard Wakefield and I bring to you a completely revamped YouTube channel which will be full of lots and lots of creative stuff including Photoshop tutorials, quick tips and speed edits. Woohoo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, mate. Calm down. <sighs> Embarrassing. Yes! Now, I love retro stuff and I love neon stuff. And I love my kids. So when my kids asked me to make a film poster of them, I thought, yes, yes, yes. Combined all those favorite elements and this is what I came up with. And in fact, it's not the first time I've made a poster for them. Check this one out. Now, without further ado, pen at the ready, let me show you the speed edit slash tutorial. Right, a super quick thing to say before we start. This is my first speed edit tutorial on my brand new look YouTube channel. And I'm excited to see how this channel pans out. Look, I've even made a highly detailed roadmap of what I'll be delivering. Anyway, the main thing that will help me here is the old like, subscribe and notify. I really do appreciate anyone doing that, even if it is just to see the next ridiculously fun Photoshop episode that I'm already making and will post ASAP. Okay, enough of that. Hmm, see what I did there? Retro, 80s, ah, forget it. First up, a very rough sketch of the poster. So I started with a background triangle shape, then crudely drew on the subjects, big near the top, progressively becoming smaller near the bottom, and some titles. Cool tip, for creating a Photoshop guide, slap bang in the middle. So I go to new guide, vertical, then I write in 50%. It will go exactly in the center of any size document that you're working on. Firstly, I photographed my kids and immediately made an error. Yep, a gun, albeit a fake gun. So guns and kids, yeah, probably not gonna go with that. So I instead cut her out, didn't include her arm, took a new photo of her holding a hairdryer, cool her, then I merged the new arm, cleaned up the hair and done. Next, I cut out an image of my second kid, this time holding a sci-fi toy gun, a little better. I moved the cutouts to my main poster and placed them into position. I'm happy with that, so I proceeded to cut around my next subject, this time a stock image. The book element I didn't really want, so for now I'll not include that in the cutout. The next two cutouts are of two guys, one looking down, one with a gun. I'll not include the gun and replace that a bit later too. Okay, so they're all in position now. I added new masks to their groups, then faded away their bottom halves, a popular look on film posters. Here comes a fantastic city panoramic, perfect for creating the horizon line. And hey, it's London, had to be done. I found this brilliant dramatic sky, which I rotated and transformed and then used as quite a main feature of the piece. Then for the triangle element, I created a shape, changed its color to blue, then the blending mode to color. Next up, on the very back of the image, I placed a Starry Night image, as well as this cybertastic blue mesh for the lower third. To add a white outline, I duplicated the triangle and added a white stroke and no fill to it. Here, I'm just perfecting the fades of each element. Okay, the guy looking down looks like he's ready for a haircut, right? So he needs one of those capes, which after chopping off the hood from this stock image, inadvertently looks damn cool and adds a sense of mystery. I'm guessing the hairdryer needs some sort of power cable coming from it. 
So I downloaded a 3D version, warped it and transformed it into place, then removed the unnecessary shadow and played with the levels to darken it. So instead of the woman holding that book, let's have her holding some hair straighteners. Or is it called a flat iron? Ah, potato, potato. That needs a cable too. This time I drew a line, giving it a perfect smooth curve by increasing my brush smoothing value. Again, some refinements and changes to levels. There simply had to be some scissors in this hair themed picture. So that's exactly what I added. Some giant kick-ass scissors, complete with neon glow made with inner and outer glow in the layer style options. That small guy holding nothing, he needs a fancy pink hair dryer too. Apparently he loves it. Well, I really made some extra work for me here. I felt her gun could be some sort of hair water spray gun. To do this, I cloned in some extra denim brought in a 3D water bottle and I made it really fit the image, then slightly blurred the denim behind it for extra believability. It needed some level water, so I drew in some blue color on a blank layer, then changed the blending mode and opacity until it felt right. A few drawn on bubbles and bottle reflections later and I was good to go. This picture definitely needed some flashy light elements and so I used an optical flare as well as some soft brush painting in overlay and normal mode. I added some extra special effect lights to the scene and that was from my own light FX pack. I then, hold on, stop, wait, what? Light FX pack? A short while ago, I created the light FX pack, a huge resource of 600 plus overlay images that I painstakingly created and they're all ready to drag and drop over any of your photos or composites. No CGI, these are completely real light effects captured in camera. Everything from light orbs, rainbows, suns, colored light energies, and much more. It comes with neatly labeled folders of overlays and a full video tutorial of how to integrate them into your images. As a way of saying thanks for watching this video, here's a code that will last for one week from now. A whopping 25% off with the discount code NEONTASTIC. Oh, and if you happen to support me by buying it, please do share with me some of your results on Instagram and Facebook, I'd love to see. Okay, moving on. The eagle-eyed amongst you would have seen that I didn't include many of the hairs in my cutouts. That's because I wanted some extra control on how the hair looked. I've got an amazing set of windblown hairbrushes that I can choose between resize and paint in the appropriate hair colors at full opacity and flow. You surely must agree that these look great. Up until now, the colors have been all over the place and without any consistency or theme. That is all about to change. Oh, and also I thought that adding some dust particles near and around that light burst would look super cool. Back to the colouring. The hairdryer was just so dull and muted, so using a hue saturation adjustment layer I could paint in a much more vibrant pink, so much better. I wanted a small and subtle pink glow outlining my subjects, so I used outer glow on a layer style of my whole group of subjects. I'll turn that on again a bit later. For now, I wanted that old school effect from film posters where they look kind of hand drawn or hand painted. I only wanted this subtly and to do it, I sharpened each subject in turn with the unsharp effect. Then I stylized with Photoshop's very own oil paint effect. As I say, just subtle. Now for some neon color palette highlights. I used a hue saturation adjustment layer in colorize mode to create some pink highlights for one side of each subject. Now one of my favorite Photoshop features came into play here and that's the blend if mode which restricts how the effect interacts with your image. I then created blue highlights for the opposite side of each subject. And once I had what I wanted with the pink and blue adjustment layers I hid each one as a black mask then painted back in carefully with a white brush to have the highlights show. Almost at the end now, guys and girls. Um, as a reminder, please don't forget to like and subscribe, etc. 
It will let me know if people actually do like this sort of content. Right, next I wanted a nice bright shiny sun and a technique I've used over the years is to firstly create a simple warm sun effect with no light factory but then also adding in an overlay this time again from my own light effects pack. These two together look really nice and epic. For this retro neon theme I chose to mainly color grade with a channel mixer adjustment layer where I just find it so satisfying pushing colors to you know quite extreme places. For extra amazing glow I used the brilliant Honoric plugin from Composite Nation. What I love are the parameters you can tweak and play around with and the fact that you can layer up and tweak until you create something really subtle or over the top. I went over to Camera Raw and played with some sliders until I felt the overall colours and levels were better. Then of course every good film poster from the 80s had some sort of flashy gradient text and to do this I used some pre-created layer styles. For my last steps I wanted to sharpen the image so I used a method of using the high pass filter to really find those edges. In fact I did it twice, once for a subtle general effect and another for a more defined obvious edge to certain details. So there you have it, the final film poster. I'm really pleased with it and I made it big enough to print. It will look great on the wall of our downstairs toilet room. Thanks so much for watching and keep an eye out for the next video coming very soon indeed.